Happy President's Day and good happy Monday morning. This is Kathy with Premier and just want to get everybody started again on our We Mean Business webinar series. This is session four. I have with me on the phone today Mike Zimaretti. He's our Regional Vice President with National Life Group. Good morning, Michael. How are you? Good morning, Kathy. I'm great. Thank you for inviting me yet again. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm glad you're doing good, and I'm hoping Florida's nicer weather than we're having here in Nebraska today. But <laughs> Actually, I'm going to whine a little bit. It's 60 degrees and we're cold, but I'm sure a lot of people on the call aren't feeling sorry for me. But uh... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, not, Florida, I'm not one of them. Happy. It's too hot, it's too cold. It's never perfect. We had fog and ice this morning, so oh, nope, not happy for you at all. So sorry. Yes. Well, maybe we can <laughs> heat it up today and talk about bit, fact finding and prospecting and target marketing and give folks a lot of really good tools to become successful. Wonderful, wonderful. You have creative solutions for today's successful business owners. Go ahead and explain to us what that's about. And right now your webinar, your um, screen is, there we go. Taking a second to load, huh? Yeah, it's like looking at looking into the abyss of darkness. You know, we've had some internet problems this this last yeah. weekend, so I'm hoping they're fixed. Yeah. Let's see. It was there a second ago. Bear with us, to everybody. Yep. Well, while you're doing that, Kathy, because I know people mm -hmm. want to have a root canal when stuff like this goes on. Thank you, exactly. everyone, for joining us. And. Um, what is this all about? Because if you've tuned in before, we've had succinct sessions on buy, sell, key man, IRA recapture, uh, retained earnings, and we're just taking a pause here before in two weeks, Mary Reed is a, is a very well-known third-party administrator that um, will help guide you through the maze of qualified planning for business owners, which um, you know, a lot of folks uh, really turn to for the ultimate in tax leverage. So what Kathy and her life team and I discussed is let's take a time out here and let's not talk product, let's not talk concept, let's talk about I think something near and dear to all of us is how do I position myself, how do I prepare myself to have the confidence, and I love this word, swagger to approach business owners, or approach anybody for that matter, uh, and really have them engage me and take me seriously. Because in my 30 years, believe it or not, Kathy, I've been in this business 30 years as an agent and as a, as a, as a distributor. And if I could do it all again, it's just like anything in life. Boy, if I could go back in time knowing what I know now, what's the X factor in all this? Well, it really is. Um, it's kind of like a chicken or the egg. You, you, you have to have some knowledge and a value proposition to bring to people, but that alone will not make you successful because I've met some very successful people that really have nobody to see, and they're not making any money, and they're depressed because they're like, Mike, I've, I've, got, you know, I've got my CLU, my CHFC, my, you know, my CFP, and I've got all this knowledge to impart on people, but I have nobody to see. And I think that's what we're going to focus on today is how to properly prepare, how to put some swagger, you know, in your approach. And I always get asked, Mike, how do I, how do I get in front of these people? So, Kathy, before I keep going on, I still have a blank screen. So let me try again. How about that? Oh. Th Are we yep, there? there you go. Yep, okay, there. so, oh, that's good news. So I, you know, I'm setting the table because, again, I'm always asked, Mike, what do I say? Uh, how do I engage these people, and, and how do I say it? You're so good at this. Can you come with me? Could you fly up here? And I said, well, you know, I, I'd love to, but there's not enough time in the day. But you really can do this stuff yourself. You know, uh, uh, how do I get people to be interested in what I say? And I find, quite frankly, that there are a lot of leads, a lot of potential clients out there that we as producers have a tendency not to uh, engage because they're kind of like that golden egg. You know, I, I know this physician that has a physician group, and I'd love to go in there and get their planning business, but I'm afraid I'm going to blow the opportunity. I'm, I, I don't know enough yet. And, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait, and all of a sudden, 
the physician retires or somebody else got there first and you're kicking yourself and saying, what did I wait for? Well, that was my golden egg in my basket and I didn't want to blow that opportunity. And, you know, when, 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 when are you ready? So the first thing in setting the table is you have to understand that in developing confidence, which is what I just described, is a lack of. We're, we're afraid to approach people because we don't, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to appear that we don't know what we're talking about. We don't, we don't want to look foolish. We don't want to, you know, step into the deep end and, you know, when we think we should be putting our toe in the shallow end. So how do, how do, you, how do you do that with that analogy? Well, you learn how to swim or you strap on a, um, a life jacket and jump in the pool and you have to have confidence that you're not going to drown. So I'm going to try to present a lot of confidence to you today in what we're doing. And if you followed our session in We Being Business, you're going to develop the tools and, and the solutions, not products, the solutions to a lot of what the business owner wants to hear. And you have to realize the first step in your confidence is you have little or no competition out there. And uh, the people really want to hear what you have to say if you say it right and, and you understand and you listen to your clients and know a little bit about them. You know, it's kind of like uh, I've got a lot of friends um, everywhere in all sorts of walks of life. And I have you know, physician friends and I have a lot of legal attorney friends. And I have one friend of mine in Tampa, Florida, where I live, that is a very successful trial attorney. And he says to me, he says, Mike, you know, the key to being in front of a jury and interrogating a witness on the stand, you never ask a question unless you know what the answer is going to be because you don't want the jury influenced one way or another. You want them influenced the way you want to influence them. Therefore, you take depositions, you prepare before you go to trial, and when you ask questions, these attorneys are not just picking these questions out of the air or out of a book. They're calculated and they are precise based on their research. So. Understand that 70%, and that's, you know, you can throw that figure in the air, it could be 60, it could be 65, it could be higher. 70% of business owners have no plan in place. They may have a handshake with their partner or family members, and when they die or become disabled, hope, and I always say hope is not a strategy, and that's something to put in your vocabulary if you want to get a quick laugh out of a client that you're talking to. Hope's not a strategy, and you can't hope that they're going to do the right thing because there's a lot of variables in that and without a plan in writing and without a plan funded, chaos can happen. Um, you have unique solutions. We've been talking about things that are very unique to national life. IRA redistribution, retained earnings, some of the product we use for those concepts no other carrier can do because they don't have the cash suppression uh, method. So you have to you have to understand these things, and you have to understand that you really differ than anybody that's going to walk in and call in these business owners because you really have a complete set of um, solutions for your business owners that nobody just walked out the back door with. I remember back in the day, business owners were called on by health insurance agents who basically said, "Hi, here's my card, and I know." I know. Well, they already know this, so they may they may not say I know. They'd say, "Here's their here's their opening conversation, Mr. Business Owner. Do you feel you're paying too much for your health insurance for you and your employees?" Well, after the you know the eye rolling or the, or the laughter, the business owner says, "Of course, I'm getting killed. It goes up every year, and it's more, and it's more, and it's more." Well, I'd like to quote something possibly cheaper for you, and we can compare the benefits. And that's really how business owners were engaged and, and, and how you got their attention. So there are many conversations that you can really uh, impart upon and, and just go out and, and, and uh, you know, attack this marketplace. So let's, let's get into true fact finding, prospecting, and target marketing. Now, a lot of people ask me, why business owners, Mike? Well, simply because business owners have two, they have two checkbooks. It's a duality. That's a big word, isn't it? A duality. They have two checkbooks, and they have two concerns. They have their business concern, and they have their family private estate concerns. They have two checkbooks. They have their business checkbook, and they have their private checkbook. So when you go to them and you start the process of fact-finding, um, you double your chances of 
being able to implement some type of a program, and as you can see by my slide, insurance producers receive eight times the commissions from customers who had a planning experience when the producer did a proper needs analysis and fact finding. So let's let's just look at a fact of life. Most of us out there on this WebEx has been to a doctor. Could you imagine going to a doctor and not not going through the process, the fact finding process that the physician already has set up for you? What is that? Well the nurse or the, the assistant weighs you, puts a blood pressure cuff on you, takes your temperature, goes through the chart, uh, even the receptionist kicked off the fact-finding process by giving you a series of paperwork that you signed and you had to list medications and operations you've had and illnesses you've suffered, etc. So all this data has been gathered before the physician ever walks in to the examination room to look you in the eye and usually they, they shake your hand, they look you in the eye, and that's the last time they look you in the eye. The rest are in their chart and they're reading all this fact-finding information and they basically start the conversation out with, why are you here today? What's, what's wrong? What's bothering you? And compare that analogy. Can you imagine if, if nobody asked you anything and you just said <laughs> the physician walked in with his script pad and said, hi, Mr. Smith, how are you today? Boy, it's nice and warm outside, you know, blah, 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 blah. Here's your prescription. i got to go and uh, take this once a day and come back and see me in six months. And you're sitting there scratching your head saying, well, how does this guy know that I need this medication? And unfortunately, for those that have had a planning experience, that's not a planning experience. That, that's not a medical experience. Most business owners have been sold term for the most part, and the agent picked some number, like $1 million, $2 million out of the sky, maybe $5 million, with no proper planning, uh, no real assertiveness as to a process, and, and that's why a lot of business owners are kind of left in the, the lurch. And more importantly, folks, Business owners are busy doing what? They're running their business. It's a full-time job. And then they go home to their family. So they haven't had time to really sit down with a planner. So let's, let's kind of dig deep and let's get into this. And, and some of this stuff is not fluff. You just need to know this stuff in your mind. You don't, have to, you don't have to impart this on your potential clients. But remember, clients need changes. Depending on the business owner's age, when they start out, they need protection. They need just pure protection, and maybe terms the way to go until they start accumulating some wealth. But as they become an established business owner, you can see this 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 line, this target market line, where now accumulation and preservation of assets. I need to accumulate some wealth. Uh, most people in our country, whether they're business owners or individual clients, do a poor job of saving, or they're in the markets, and that's another that's another target right now. The markets are really jittery. And people are concerned. If you could put them in something that is very conservative, that has you know no downside and an upside, you know they're all ears because I see this every cycle. Uh, the market crashes, it recovers, it crashes. People are just sick of it, and uh, they want a solution. And then you could see the mature as you get to the 50s and 55 plus, they're really advice driven. You know, and that's when you can go in and talk about the IRA recapture, and you can talk about retained earnings, and and they're really looking at uh, lifetime income for their retirement and transferring their assets somehow. They're either going to sell their business and hopefully live off of those assets, or they're going to pass them along in a succession plan to their family. This slide here, I think, is really golden because some people may laugh and say, well, big deal, that's a sales cycle, that makes sense, that's common sense, who doesn't know that? A lot of folks don't understand from an organizational perspective what the timeline is to be successful and actually make money from approaching someone. You know, being successful is, you know, being profitable. Well, number one, you got to identify the prospect. That means you've got to start doing some research. You know, who are you going to market to? And how am I going to approach them? And we're going to talk about that this morning. Uh, then when I approach the prospect, how do I establish the relationship and discuss this process? Well, I've got a handout for you that does that, and you can contact Kathy Elkins and her incredible life team at Premier Life and Annuity, and she actually has a series of several documents that I'm going to reference in this WebEx this morning that will really help you get out there and, and get the information you need or develop that confidence and swagger. 
Um, establishing goals and gathering information with the client through the fact, through a proper fact finding situation, not like when the you know the physician just writes the prescription. Um, and I call that product peddling. By the way, people are just selling something, and that gives us a bad name in the in this industry because people look at you and go, "Oh, you're just trying to sell me something." But if you have a plan and a process and a timeline and a sales cycle, they go, "Hey, you're a professional. You really took the time to understand what my needs are." What, what worries me, what keeps me up at night as a business owner or a father or a, a family member. And then you develop and you present the plan. And it's great because people say, well, gee, you put some thought into this and you're addressing the issues we discussed in our first couple of meetings. And then, hey, you handle any objections and then you implement the plan. And oh, by the way, in this timeline, you may laugh when I tell you this, but <laughs> you've got, you got to establish the insurability of the client, both health-wise and financially, you will not know how many times, uh, or you just have no idea how many times I see applications come into our company, and people are asking for these ridiculous amounts of life insurance, like we're the, the lottery or something, and the client really doesn't have much net worth or assets. And I said, how did you arrive at that five or ten million dollar idea? Uh, and they just shrug their shoulders, you know. Or, or we find out that boy, the client is really ill and had all of these situations and is, is really uninsurable or going to be highly rated and not eligible for some of the living benefits the agent kindly threw out on the table. So th this is all part of this timeline and gathering information and then implement the plan, close the sale. And then, you know, I'll tell you, one of the hardest things that folks can't do is service the plan. Go back every year and do an annual review. Make sure they understand what their policies do, what these solutions do. Make sure they understand the living benefits and the disability issues and the chronic issues and everything because people do forget. And sometimes when it comes time to pay that renewal premium, they, they get alligator arms, as we say in Florida, and they don't want to write that check because they said, oh, I don't know if I want this life insurance. You know, you know it's kind of expensive or, you know, I've got other things that I might want to do with that money. So let's start off with recognizing. To develop this confidence and this swagger, you have to recognize the life stages of a business owner. So regardless of your age, when you start out opening a new business or you buy a new business, you need to protect what's important. The secret sauce, the people that make it go, the key people, key man insurance. Um, you want to secure the future because without these folks, uh, this business isn't going anywhere. And by the way, what a lot of people don't understand is that um, sometimes without the business owner, and this is very key, folks, very, very key. Um, some people are amazed, uh, just, I'm just amazed at, at the thought process of, well, if John dies, we're going to sell the business to somebody else. Well, that's taking for granted a lot of issues like, is the business worth anything without John? Maybe John was the business. Without John, there is no business. There is no worth. So these are things that come out. And if you don't have a funded plan like life insurance, the family could be left in the lurch because they thought, well, I was going to sell this business, but oh my gosh, it's not worth anything without John. Uh, and, and maybe the partner that survives doesn't have the expertise and skills. And we talked about that in KeyMan. And then succeeding in retirement. You know, business owners, you want to ask them, you know, what's the purpose of this business down the road? What's your exit strategy? These are, these are all part of the little fact-finding process. And, and why I'm kind of laying this out here, um, I want you to think, and some of you may think this is commonsensical, and some of you may not even have thought about this stuff. You need to anticipate all this stuff. And what I'm giving you today, this isn't something you're going to regurgitate and go out and throw at your clients. You're going to take all this in, and there's an old Texas expression, let it marinate. Let it marinate in your mind so that, you know, think about what I want you to think about when this WebEx is over. I want you to smile and think, Big Mike, as my friends call me, and say, man, did he give me a lot of conversation points? Because it's really, to get people to engage you, it's no different than socially. You, you've got to have a conversation. And what do you talk about? If you, The more points of interest you have and the more understanding you have of social behavior, the more successful you'll be at being a social being. Same in sales. Leaving a legacy. Most business owners are no different 
than family folks. They want to leave a legacy to their family. They may want that business to stay. Maybe that business was started by their parents or their grandparents. Or maybe they want to start this legacy line. So recognize all these different stages. So let's really get into it. Let's roll up our sleeves. Fact finding begins with you. What is your value proposition? As an insurance professional, be prepared to go in and differentiate yourself because somebody may have come in there and done a pretty poor job and turned them off and then and, and the clients are like, I don't ever want to deal with an insurance person again. And we've always heard those stories. There is a book that just hit the marketplace called Cause, C-A-U-S-E, and it has our beloved CEO of the National Life Group, Mehran Asadi, on the front cover. It's written by Jackie and Kevin Freiberg. And if you don't know who those folks are, because many of you probably never heard the name before, they wrote an incredible book a few years ago on the chairman and CEO of Southwest Airlines. And these folks have written a book about the National Life Group. And I'm not here today trying to sell books by any stretch of the imagination. But what's interesting is under the title of cause, and it's got the CEO's um, hands kind of interlocked and backwards with on his palm of his hands, it says respect all. And it's talking about the company culture and what we've done with living benefits and kind of revolutionized uh, the life insurance industry. And this plays into what I'm going to show you later. But underneath the title, it says a business strategy for standing out in a sea of sameness. What does that mean? Well, recognize, and here's your swagger and your confidence again. All of your competition is going out doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And somebody said, uh, what's the old line, Kathy? The uh, <laughs> insanity is defined by doing the same thing over and over and over again and not getting a result. It's that um, sea of sameness. They're all out there selling, oh, I'm, I'm trying to sell you the cheapest term. Here, look at this. i got all these proposals. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this. And, and you, you, you probably want to buy this because this is cheaper than that. And they're looking at you like you're crazy, going, oh, I've already seen this dance. Yeah, I've seen this movie. I've had a million guys come in here, or, or maybe they haven't. You know, I, I have said that people don't come out and prospect these folks because they, they, they fake themselves out. They feel that everybody else has and have done this, and they don't want to go in and feel that they're jumping into this sea of sameness. So what we can do, and as we are going to talk about moving forward, why you? Offer unique conversations and expertise to your clients. And when you prospect, as we'll talk about approaching CPAs and tax accountants or business owners or employees of business, you've got to you've got to you got to answer that question: Why you? What are you bringing to the table that nobody else has? Other than this is a relationship business and people have to like you, but you you got to bring more to the table than people just liking you. You got to appear to know what you're doing and you got to offer. So how about this? As we move forward, we are going to have our Biz Equity Connection online. How would you like to offer business uh, owners a free evaluation of their business? We'll be able to give you a free valuation as of you know them answering a few questions as to what their business is worth today. That's a great conversation. I can gawk into the community and knock on Kathy's door, and she owns a dry cleaning establishment. Kathy, my name is Mike Zamoretti. I um, I'm with uh, blah 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 Incorporated, and I am working in the community, working with business owners, doing planning. And uh, I'm just coming out. I want to give you my card, and here's a brochure uh, of what I do. Here's my value proposition, and uh, uh, I just wanted to. Uh, Introduce myself and uh, tell me about your business. Um, how long have you had this, and can you tell me about it? And as you're developing that, it's that easy to prospect, folks. And then you say, well, you know, Kathy, do you know after Kathy's talked for like 15 or 20 minutes and you're registering all the information she's giving you, you say, hey, Kathy, do you know, do you know what your business is worth? Um, no, I have no idea, Mike. I, I haven't really thought of it. I'm too busy running my business. My husband and I are just there's not enough time in the day. Well, I know you probably want to know where this business is going. I can get you for $60. I can get you a report that will show you what this business will be worth 5, 10, 15 years down the road. And I'm going to tell you the prognosis of your industry, the dollar dry cleaning business, where it's headed. And whether, you know, you don't want to be surprised working hard for 10, 15 years. Can you imagine, remember the old blockbuster video stores? Uh, how about all the people that owned all those franchises? They probably thought in their mind that they were going to sell those and that was going to fund their retirement. Well, now they just evaporated. I mean, I don't, I don't even know if there is anyone. Uh, you know, I, I've never seen one. They're gone. 
So God bless those guys and gals because that, that business is probably worthless. Do you have a succession plan in place, Kathy? Uh, um, tell me what keeps you up at night. You know, by the time I get to that, Kathy and I have got a rapport. Kathy, the business owner, and I have a rapport. And um, there's, there's two methods to my madness with these questions. If Kathy isn't as outgoing as I, and she's not as forthcoming because that's just her personality or she's guarded with her private information, I can turn it third party and say, well, Kathy, you know what? It's interesting. As I go out and meet business owners like you, this is what I find keeps them up at night. And I list a bunch of variables that we'll get to. And Kathy's taking this all in. What am I doing in the prospecting phase? I am gently disturbing Kathy. I am putting thoughts in her head, and hopefully, and I'm not, I'm not being a bad guy, I'm doing a service to Kathy, because hopefully Kathy, when she goes home at night with her husband and has dinner with her family, she's going to say, this guy came into the shop today, and he gave me his card. I got it right here with this, uh, this brochure he gave me, and he really gave me some thoughts, you know, gave me some ideas that, do you, do you know what our business is worth? And uh, did you know what other people in our industry are worried about? I never even thought that we should be, you know, we, we shouldn't be worried about that kind of stuff. Um, again, why business owners? Well, most business owners are too busy running their own business, had little to no planning uh, in place as a result. Maybe they got some chief term, uh, and it was an ad hoc death benefit that somebody just picked out of the sky. And we've kind of went over all this, but some people just don't even have it, you know, have a plan that's funded. Maybe they have a plan in their mind. So here's here's what keeps, or here's what should keep business owners up at night. And this is an art, an art of gently. You don't want to go in and scare them to death, uh, but you want to you want to be professional and say, I have solutions to what I'm about to share with you. So don't be scared and start crying and run in the back room and close the door. We we've, we've these are non-threatening situations that we can take care of, like paying unnecessary taxes. I may have learned in my conversation with uh, Kathy that she has a very lucrative business going with her husband, going on with her husband, and they're going to open up two or three more dry cleaning establishments in other towns. That means they're making money. Uh, succession plan, or do they have a handshake with their fingers crossed, hoping that their partners, maybe they have two or three partners, they may have nothing in writing. If someone dies or becomes disabled through an accident or illness, is everything going to function the same way? If they're obtaining bank loans, are the banks going to call the loan or are they going to view the loan situation if one of those key individuals passes away? So there's a lot of things that we learn from key man and buy sell that we won't kind of go over again here. But loss of a key employee or partner in death or disability is huge to any type of business and could be a big function of what that business is worth. And prognosis of the business, we discussed that. BizEquity.com can really help you differentiate yourself by going out and uh, giving uh, giving people business valuations. Now, I, I want to make it very clear that these are ideas I'm throwing out to you. Uh, I'm not I'm not making any money for you enrolling with Biz Equity or paying Biz Equity, and, and nor do I want to. Uh, I'm just throwing out ideas that successful people are using. It's up to you whether you think these are good ideas. Obviously, uh, the retained earnings taxes and general taxation issue is a huge item that we learned about two weeks ago. And I really, if you missed that Retain Earnings WebEx, contact Kathy and her team and, and, and view or listen to the recorded uh, WebEx because this is something that no other carrier can really take out in the fashion that we have done to business owners that are C corporations. And there's a lot of subchapter S and LLCs that can affiliate as C corporations. So get, get that, and whether you write Retain Earnings or not, or use the concept. It'll get you in the door conversationally. It'll put you on a pedestal higher than your competitors and saying, gee, you know, Bob doesn't know any of this stuff. He's he's our health and life guy, but you know, he's wanted to sell us this whole life policy, but there's no planning or method to his madness. And he's asking for a lot of money. I don't feel comfortable. Remember, the clients have to understand why they are doing something before they become this call to action to engage in the solution, i.e. buying the product and closing the sale. And that's why people sit on the fence and think about it, because they haven't, the why has not been properly established. I love this one. This is, this is and I wish I would have known about this 25 years ago, uh, but the National Life Group has the answer to this with living benefits, income riders on their life products, 
the number one put off to put you off if you do approach folks, and we fear this, like, okay, what do I do now when they say, oh, I already got tons of life insurance. My ex-brother-in-law was a life insurance agent with New York Life, and he sold me a bunch of life insurance. Well, here are the questions, and I, I, I love it. Have you ever had a relationship with a financial services professional? It doesn't matter what the answer is. If it's yes, that's great. Did you buy life insurance from them? Yes, I did. Great. I would like to review that life insurance because we need to redesign it and upgrade it to a more modern type of life insurance if you're still insurable and your health hasn't changed. Now, did you see what I did there psychologically? I threw two things out and I took them away at the same time because the client's going to say, well, you know, I did have a health issue. Does that make me uninsurable? I don't know. I'm not an insurance professional. Um, what does he mean? What does he or she mean by redesign my old-fashioned life insurance? And then you do a quick two to three minute infomercial on the new living benefits. Terminal, chronic, critical illness, critical accident. You know, uh, that will make their eyes pop open because you gently disturbing them and they're saying, well, wait a minute, my life insurance doesn't do any of this stuff. And I'm right now, so you're gently disturbing them and now they may, instead of blowing you off saying, hey, I got lots of life insurance. Now they're going to say, well, you know, I'll take you up on a comparison of what I could have with the new modern life insurance versus the old. And hopefully you've learned our living benefit saga of life insurance you don't have to die to use, which is a tremendous, tremendous story. Has your health changed since you took out that uh, insurance? Is it, terminate, is, it ter is it term or permanent? Not permanent. Um, term, a lot of people, a lot of business owners are on the last two, three, four years of their term. And they're looking at a substantial increase in premium. And now, as you looked at that one slide, with as they're maturing, they now have cash and profitability. And they want to put money in to grow tax deferred and be able to take out tax-free income. And hey, the lifetime income benefit rider. Income guaranteed tax-free for the rest of your life. You can never, ever run out of money. And it's always tax-free. That's a huge story to a business owner or anybody else. When was the last time he or she reviewed your program with you? And of course, no living benefits. Do you have a trust? Do you have a will? All these different issues. Have you overfunded your life insurance? Well, what does that mean? Well, that means put more money than the minimum. Well, why would I want to do that? Well, because you can take this money out tax three, five, three through the loan system. And you explain that to them. They're like, oh my God, I didn't, I didn't know that. You know, so there's so many different things. And again, you know, does your does your permanent program have an income rider? Well, if you're not with National Life, nobody else has one. So the answer is no. Uh, well, let's redesign your life portfolio. So solutions in the We Mean Business protocol that we've been following and, and coming soon, qualified plans, and we're going to talk about premium finance, we're going to talk about captive insurance plans, you're going to be so well-rounded. And, you, and I love this word, robust. You're going to have such a robust awareness. Folks, you don't have to be an expert on this stuff. I used to be an annuity distributor years ago. In the last, and I've, I've distributed life products, but, you know, term and some UL. But the indexing, I really got my arms around it. Well, it looked intimidating, but then when I learned this whole story, it was pretty simple. I knew how indexed annuities worked. And I knew how life insurance worked. Well, you, you kind of marry them together. you got a hybrid. It's the same talk. It's the same conversation. But the solutions that we have uh, and why we're partnered and why we ha are the focal point of these WebEx sessions, we have a lot of unique uh, solutions to key man insurance, buy-sell opportunities. We have very unique tax leverage ideas such as IRA recapture distribution solution, the retained earnings one for three trifecta that we did two weeks ago. Coming next, uh, next two weeks, qualified plans. So we went through all this. Okay, Mike, big deal. This is a, another uh, infomercial for your company, isn't it? No, no. I, I, what this is is to develop the swagger in the back of your mind. What I want you to do, and I hope you know Kathy and her team at uh, Premier Life and Annuity feel the same way, we want to develop this confidence in you that once you have all this, this knowledge, and the knowledge of who you're prospecting, it becomes so easy to engage people because it just becomes second nature. 
because you have a lot to talk about. It's like practicing a speech. Are you ever nervous if you have to give a little talk or anything at a memorial service or at a school function or a PTA or a business chamber of commerce? You get nervous. But if you practice and practice and practice it a uh, hundred times, you can't wait to get up there. And, and, and then, you know, like me, when I was, <laughs> I used to be afraid to talk in front of folks. And uh, obviously now I, you can't shut me up. But uh, it's practice. It's practice. So, and it's confidence, knowing that you've got something to say that's interesting. Also, before we get to prospecting and target marketing, have some awareness of the overall underwriting of life insurance products, particularly, and I think a lot of you know about the health aspects. Are you a smoker? Are you a non-smoker? Your height, your weight, your blood pressure, have you had any major illnesses? When did, you know, all of that. But then there's a second concept. There's a financial underwriting piece. There has to be a verifiable need for the death benefit you're applying for. There's got to be a purpose, a need, and a method disclosed in a very thorough cover letter provided by you, the agent. That's why you have to do this fact finding and know your clients, not just to close the sale, but to get it through the system, to get it through the pipeline to get it issued. There's got to be things that you have to know about, like have you had bankruptcies? Now, one bankruptcy, Cannot, is not a big problem. But if there's a history of a series of bankruptcies or defaulted loans, uh, you may not be able to get this uh, client or this business through uh, bankruptcies and, or actually through the underwriting process. Prepare the client for personal, very invasive personal disclosure documents such as, I need to see the last three years of your tax returns. I need to see a financial, I, I need you to fill out this personal financial disclosure questionnaire. And this usually occurs for $2 million of death benefit and above. And always know and make sure your clients know that whatever goes on in their life, medically or financially, in terms of underwriting, it's all case by case situations. So, you know. It's never a, and that's why you call your team at Premier Life, or you call Big Mike, or you, you call your underwriter and say, this is what I have. Is there something that we can do, do for these folks? And also, a thorough cover letter always gives the underwriter an idea of what you're trying to do, because they put yourself in their position. They can't read people's mind by taking a nap, or just reading a nap. So let's go through this really quick because we've really eaten up a lot of time here. But what's exciting for you, you can call Premier Life and Annuity and get the business builder. This is basically telling your client what you do. It's an overview and process. So if a client, if you start a really good conversation, I'd hand them my business card. I'd get some of these. I'd order some of these from National Life. You can do that online. You can get them through Premier Life. And uh, I would get maybe also uh, a little brochure on the living benefits and just basically say, this is, this is what I do for business owners in this, in this area. And it really sets the stage. And I'll, I'll just kind of flip through it real quick. I suggest you get this. Uh, Kathy has a PDF of this, and the Life team does. They can send it to you. And this is something you just hand, hand business owners and say, here's some of the key points of just planning. How hard is it for you to save money? Everybody's in the same boat. Time and knowledge is a challenge. Um, What's the penalty for being half right? You know, time goes by quickly, very quickly. Um, and then you just go through this whole brochure, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of go through this. But it's a non-threatening way to point out what your client is challenged with and why they need to take action at some point. And the clock is ticking. Let's take action now while you're insurable and you have some money. And uh, again, you're planting the why. Um, and again, this is all pretty much self-explanatory. Explains why clients should do business with you. This is good stuff to read through. And, and you know what? I, I, there's two ways to look at this material I'm about to show you. A, you use it. <laughs> Duh. Or B, you take a lot of the information and you just make it into a conversation. You don't have to hand it to them and say, fill this out. Or here, read this, because you know, a lot of people will not read this. Um, this helps you build the dynamic of confidence. What to say? I always get asked, Mike, what do I say? Are you kidding me? Uh, you can't shut me up. I could do this WebEx for two, three hours. There's just so much to talk about. So, but a lot of folks don't know this. So read, read, read. Get your educational aspect up. Start, start 
owning a lot of this information. And then include it in your vocabulary when you're prospecting. And again, this is just, you know, this is what I'm going to do. We will, and this is what you're going to do. You know, you're going to make a decision. You're going to write the check. You're going to keep this program in place. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to review you every year. And then a few final points, you know, blah, 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 blah. And you've really done a professional job with your client. That just kind of gives them the overview. Tools to succeed. All of these uh, tools, we have tons of them. National Life's been around for 167 years. We've had a very robust, still do, career channel. So we have a lot of leverage at home office that you can, you can impart on. So fact finding, very quickly, how do, I, you know, how do I engage people? How do I get all these facts? Well, the objectives are get the facts. Do a little uh, prospecting, suspecting, you know, kind of you look at a, a dealership like a car dealership and you kind of start thinking, well, they're profitable and they, you know, there's people that own it and there's management, you know, so that's suspecting what's going on. Then you go in and you reach the inner person and, and you talk about really what's going on and then you build from there. You already have started the process with tell me about your business. Fact finding is just digging deeper. Remember the doctor's office. The doctor comes in. He already knows some things about you that you've already told his assistant. Now you're going to dig deeper. Basic information and data form. Again, this is what I'm referring to. You can use this form that Kathy and her team has in a PDF or get it and read it and understand some of the key points of the information that you're going to need as you move forward in this process. Uh, so, you know, and I'm just going to flip through this. Basic stuff, who you are about your family, you know, blah, 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 feeling questions, where do you work, you own it, you're not, uh, a view of what you already have in force, homeowners, auto, you know, long-term care, life insurance. You really want to find, just like going to the doctor's office, filling out those forms that the receptionist gives you. These are things they need to know. How can a client commit to putting money into a life insurance or some kind of a planning program if there hasn't been all this discovery and fact-finding, concepts. Uh, how do you discuss concepts if you don't, you know, how can you, how can you bring in A, B, and C alternatives if you don't know the folks? How about this? Documents and other, this is another, this could be a whole new WebEx. Do you have a will or trust? If the answer is yes, how long ago did you do it? And what state did you do it in? Oh my God, I did it in Oklahoma, but I moved to Nebraska. Okay, well it may not be really, you know, if you die in Nebraska, we may want to research that with an attorney. Maybe you need a new will, or maybe you need a codicil, or maybe you need an update. Um, you know, and, and you just go through all these different things. You know, it's, it's just very, very self-explanatory. What does this tell us? Pretty simple. What kind of programs are in force? What kind of debt? Look at the debt. So, you know, what are you going to do if something happens to you, Mr. Smith? Uh, look at all this debt you have. Yeah, I know, I know. Well. You know, when's the last time, when you took out insurance, did you have this kind of debt? No, I didn't. I've got a $500,000 term, but boy, i got a lot more debt than that. Okay, so we need to upgrade your, your present situation. Um, this is a great document, too, life, life insurance checkup. This is for that person that says, hey, Kathy, I already got life insurance. I don't need to talk to you. Well, I want to redesign that. I want to look at your existing life portfolio. It could be severely out of date. So uh, we have forms for that. We have this checkup list, and we have a consumer letter and flyer that if you want to you know, do this with people that you know that have, have life insurance, and say, well, here, fill this out, and I want to come in, and I want to look at your policy, and then I, I might come back with an updated version of the death benefit, or maybe we have to increase the death benefit. Let's look at what the living benefits would do, and let's see if overfunding it or putting more money into it, how that would accumulate cash for you for retirement. Because remember, we're tying all these things together. You're the financial professional. Mr. Smith, what if your business isn't worth what you think it is when it comes time to retire and you sell it? and you only get half of what you want or, or hardly anything because times have changed, like the blockbuster video stores. Or you're the secret sauce, and without you, you know, the business isn't really saleable unless you come with it. So you go through all these different data points. I love this thing. Life event changes. Uh, boom, 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 you know. Just read all those. Some people, you know, and I, I don't have enough time, but I love to watch crime forensic shows. And I always scratch my head because I see these detectives going back and asking the neighbors the same questions over and over and over and over again. And I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, is this just filler? I mean, how stupid can people be? The, the guy already said no. He didn't notice anything suspicious going on next door. 
And then about the 10th or 12th time, the detective asks the neighbor. The neighbor says, oh, yeah, at 4 in the morning, I was awakened by this loud noise. And my neighbor was out there with a backhoe at 4 in the morning digging this huge hole. <laughs> it's backyard. I'll leave. I'll leave that story. Uh, you imagine what was going on. But um, if you don't ask and you don't ask these pointed questions, they may. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I was divorced and I have two or three children from another marriage that I have a financial responsibility to, or I have a handshake with my ex-wife that I was going to take care of uh, college funding, and you know, and, and if I ever sold the business, I was going to give a quarter of that, the proceeds to my to my first family that that you know. And then I have my new family. So life checkup, insurance worksheet, and online calculators. This is another big question that a lot of folks. And when I prospect, when I talk to folks, how do I arrive at a number? I mean, how do, how do I struggle with this? You know, some people say, well, eight to ten times, you know, annual salary or maybe the profitability of the company. Well, we have all this stuff online for you. But we have a life checkup sheet. Again, this is just information. I don't, I don't think everybody should grab all of this, but you know, if you want to read it real quick, but when I say grab all of it, I mean don't take all of it and overkill your clients. You don't want to hit them with all these forms and stuff and say, hey, read all this. They won't. Um, but these are things that you can, you know, some people are analytical. Some people are, you know, they like the big picture and they like to verbalize. So, you know, we're just going to show you what we have here and the economic value of what your life is worth and, and where you can get uh, the face amount. How much life insurance? Uh, human, human value online factors. Here's our website. Go to business development and there's calculators. And you just kind of zoom on down and uh, there, there's business development and there. How much life insurance do I need? And you click on that and you just kind of fill everything in and, and you're good to go. So this is tremendous help and then the human life calculator. Um, be prepared to address common client objections and issues. Don't go in there not thinking about stuff like this. Common attributes. Well, I have lower negative cash flow. I'm kind of restricted with that. I have high expenditures and debt. Uh, my savings tend to be small. There is a successful adage out there that, and this is what people really appreciate from you, they'll come to you and say, you know, there's an old expression, pay yourself first. That is the most important thing to do. I know you got debt. I know, but you got to start somewhere. Even if it's a hundred bucks a month into something, let's start something and let's build on it because you're going to get these objections. And and when are you going to start? And when you start, it's going to be too late. Uh, protection and risk management. Again, if you're the secret sauce or you're the leader of the cash flow and something happens to you, um, and you know people just don't keel over and die. There's usually some type of an illness or disability that precedes it, and, and that's another planning cycle that people don't understand. They uh, they say, well, you know, I've got this death insurance, but uh, that's if I die, everybody should be fine. Well, what if you have a living death, meaning, you know, you've got this disability, you're battling cancer, you're battling heart disease. How does the business go on, particularly if you're really the secret sauce to making this thing go? So there's all of these issues, you know, risk management and uh, uh, different things to consider. Also, this is a great publication that Kathy also has. Understand taxation of life insurance. No, and, and for example, over here, accelerated benefit riders. Well, you're talking about these benefits. How about if we understand what the taxation is on that? And and well, there is no taxation if it's done correctly. And then what about the premium? What about you know? There, these are things. What's a MEC? I, I I talk to agents all the time. They go, whoa, 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 wait a minute, Mike. MEC. What's a MEC? MEC, what does that mean? Well, if you're selling life insurance, you don't know what this means. Um, you're doing a disservice to yourself, and you're doing a disservice to your clients. So get to know the fundamentals. It's not hard stuff. This can be read in five minutes, and you'll understand it. Pretty simple stuff. So prospecting, opportunities within your client database, do an annual review with your folks, but more importantly, boy, that's commonsensical, Mike. I didn't tune into this WebEx to learn that. That's pretty simplistic. Well, how about this, though? When you're doing your annual review, Ask for an introduction to their accountant or CPA. That's who you really want to get to. Because if you show, if you share with them these unique solutions and you walk in with this swagger, you'll be able to get, I think, some introduction system. Or being invited, invited to speak at Chamber of Commerce events or different things. Talk about how you offer valuation services. I was playing golf the other day. And I told somebody what was new with our company, and the guy says, my brother had, I told my brother about this. He, what's that biz equity company? He wants to get this 14-page evaluation for 60 bucks. 
and wants to know what the prognosis of his business and where it's going. And that's amazing, Mike. That's that's really – he was amazed. That's all he talked about all weekend was this, who's this guy in Tampa? I want to talk to him. And it's, it's just conversations like that. Uh, referrals, well, my gosh, really? <laughs> Could you please refer somebody to you? i got to tell you something. I, I know how referrals work, and if you're not at the top of your game and you're not interesting, nobody's going to refer nobody to you. I don't know if that's proper grammar, but it ain't happening. How's that for proper grammar? Because they're going to look at you and say, I'm not going to embarrass myself. This person is going to go over and try and sell them life insurance. But if you have it wrapped in a just a fundamental approach, all this information I gave you, if you really – hone your skill and have a elevator speech, you'll be able to get in here and, and, and do this. So um, again, CPAs, tax accounting referrals are phenomenal, and that's uh, leading into our CPA advantage. Talk about leading, and we're talking about prospecting here. Well, how can I prospect CPAs, for goodness sake, Mike? I'm really fired up because that retained earnings program that I learned about with Ellen Lamer, your, your attorney with advanced sales, and then when she did that uh, uh, the IRA recapture program, uh, boy, I could take this out to CPAs. How do I how do I find these CPAs? How do, how do I get them? Well, LinkedIn. You can go to LinkedIn. You can go to your friends on LinkedIn if you're LinkedIn, and you can you can if they're on LinkedIn, and you just click on a certain. And I can't do it here on the screen, but you can actually see you can put in CPAs or tax accounts, and it'll it'll pull up your friends who are CPAs and tax accounts, and then you can call your friend and say, hey. There's like, you know, like 10 or 12 CPAs or tax accounts. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're in my uh, golf league or, you know, the friends are a friend of mine. Or my dad used to be a CPA and he knows all these guys. Can you introduce me to them? Okay, why? See how all these previous slides were important? You have to have that why. Well, here's what I do that's really unique. And these CPAs are going to love to hear about this because a lot of them don't know this stuff is going on. And I really can partner with them. Okay, um, we do two CPA symposiums in Las Vegas. June 1st through 4th, and in November, where you can actually bring a CPA with you. So if you develop, and, and again, <laughs> common sense is you don't run this out at first, but when you start developing relationships with CPAs, you could say, hey, at the end of the rainbow, if this all works out really well, I can get you 14 hours of CPE credit. We can go to Las Vegas, and you can talk to leading uh, accountants in the industry. We'll be talking to us about different aspects of unique financial planning, et cetera. Um, why should you care? Well, you build your prospecting reservoir, and boy, these guys, are, they got the key to the vault because they could really, you know, if, if, if my CPA says I need to sit down and talk with you, um, that's, that's, that's pretty much a done deal. I'm going to make time to do that. Uh, there's different partnership opportunities with CPAs. I don't want to go into all this, but you can, you know, enter into joint marketing efforts. You can just pay them a, a finder's fee depending on your state. Uh, you could do a joint venture. You could become an in-house agent for them, or they could work with you, and they could get their license and, and revenue share. So there's different things. How do I find CPAs? Really simple. Get on, get online, Google them. You could go to the state board of accountancy in your state, download the list. Uh, you could ask your potential clients when, when you walk in. Hey, I'm Big Mike Kathy, and I'm in this neighborhood. I'm I'm going to be your go-to guy for financial services, and I specialize in planning and solutions for business owners like you. But before, and you, you smile, before I ask you if you have any experience with financial, um, you know, financial advisors, could you refer me to a local CPA that you work with that does your taxes or your accounting? Because I'd like to talk to them and introduce myself. That is an amazing way to get tremendous leads through an incredibly free prospecting technique. And it's non-threatening. Everything has to be either gently disturbing or very non-threatening. It's very interesting, isn't it? And then, of course, personal observation of just casual social uh, uh, situations. How do I get in front of some of these CPAs? Well, I may not be as brash and bold as you, Mike, and maybe I don't have that swagger yet. Do you have something I can just drop off? Or do you have, if I buy email addresses, can I send out emails? Or, hey, I do have that swagger. I want to do large seminars. Or I want to do, you know, I want to do a wine and cheese tasting and invite all these CPAs. We have all of this information. We've had a 30-year networking program uh, in our company with the National Life Group on how to work with CPAs and engage them called the CPA Advantage Program. And finally, 
target marketing, Kathy and her team has an incredible agent guide to identifying specific target markets. So I've got you all excited now when you say, hey, Mike, I want to target doctors in my area or dry cleaners or funeral homes or, you know, <laughs> you name it. Well, this target marketing uh, group will give you the what, why, how, the resources, where to find things, you know, things to consider, identifying uh, an accessible group and uh, how to how to kind of get to know that group a little bit so you could tailor your conversation um, to appealing to them. Um, try out some sample markets in your mind. Uh, see if it makes sense. A lot of you are in target markets right now. If you're selling med subs and annuities in long-term care, well, my gosh, you're in the senior market. You know how to target that market. It, it's, you know, well, business owners are no different. And, you know, middle American families, affluent individual, multicultural groups, we have, if you're a multicultural, we have literature in different ethnic versions. So, you know, again, consult with Premier Life and Annuity on that. Uh, be purposeful in target marketing. You know, don't shotgun it. Understand the marketplace. Do some research. Position yourself to know what keeps those people up at night. See where we've gone with this? So now we're getting more sophisticated in our approach. We know that we're going to go in and ask them what keeps them up at night. But remember my analogy of the trial attorney? I already know what keeps them up at night. I'm just asking that question to gently disturb them. Okay, but I better know what keeps them up at night, and that call, that's called understanding the marketplace. Research, leverage your time and effort, and make it repeatable, and develop that swagger and confidence, where you go in and go, Mr. Funeral Director, I know you're in the same kind of business I'm in. We're both in the death and dying business. However, I work with, you know, I mean, you can keep it comical, you could do different things like that, but, you know, realistically, you walk in and say, seriously, sir or ma'am, I know what keeps you up at night as a funeral director, or I know what keeps you up at night as a dry cleaning establishment, or I know what keeps you up at night as a physician practice. These are how you develop this. Uh, and the benefits replaces, oh man, who should I call upon today? Trust me when I say they're out there. There are so many people out there that need your time and expertise. All you have to do is just establish a common reference point, and everything will start coming to you. The referrals, because you'll be known as the, I, I know a guy in Tampa, they call him Doc, and he's not a doctor, but he just works with physicians. He's done so much research on physicians, and you know what he said to me? Do you know why I did that, Mike? I said, well, because physicians in your mind make a lot of money. He goes, no, that had nothing to do with it at all. I wanted to be a doctor when I was a kid. And my parents never had the money to send me to med school, and I never took academics seriously to even get into med school. But I love the medical profession. So I have now become a financial advisor to people in the medical profession, and I've done all my target marketing for that, and people know me as the insurance doc, and they, they send their, they send them to me. And when I go see my doctor, he calls me doc, and because I have him as a, or maybe I don't have him as a client. I do or I don't, but he refers me to people. So again, people are not going to, they're not going to seek you out unless you present yourself. And I guess the best tip I can ever get, give you is learn how to market yourself before you target market other people. Because it's kind of like, and I'll share some personal information. Big Mike, you know, I, I was a professional athlete, and I was a star football player in high school, as you can imagine. Uh, and, um, you know, I was kind of shy. And then I was afraid of girls. and Not afraid, but, you know, I, I didn't have that swagger socially. On the field, I was a stud. I was a superstar athlete. But off the field, I was a shy guy. And uh, I'll never forget. The biggest stressful, most, uh, um, I guess, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, stressful position I was ever in was a senior prom. You know why? Uh, all these girls were asking me to go to the senior prom. I couldn't dance. I never went out and danced. And I'm like, well, people go to the prom, they go and they dance, right? So, and I always use this analogy, you can, you can rent a limo, you can go out and rent a tuxedo, you can go buy a corsage for your date for the prom, and you get a new haircut, and you smell good, and you look good, and you go to the prom, and guess what? You can't dance. So why'd you go? <laughs> and you stand there watching everybody else dance with your date or, you know, whatever. So, yeah, I went to the prom, and it was very, uh, 
uh, uncomfortable. But you know what? I learned from that, and I, I learned how to dance. So maybe I'm not a great dancer, but I removed that fear from my life, and everything kind of opened up. And it's the same in this business. Knowing how to prospect and target are, are something, but, you know, you know, know your business, know what you're doing, getting started, identify your potential prospects, pre-qualify those folks. And, you know, when you're asking people, tell me about your business, what are you really listening for? Are they profitable? Can they afford to fund a plan? Have they, you know, somebody says, oh, my God, I, I'm, I'm thinking of selling my business because I haven't made any money in five years. Well, they need some different kind of help. They may not be able to get the help from you. They, they may be going under, and who knows what's going to happen. But maybe they can refer you to someone. And, again, we've talked about all these other aspects. Um, identifying potential markets, again, that's a personal situation. However, it matches your strengths, your interests, and your logistics. And then pre-qualifying the market, we've talked about that. We have all these checklists, you know, market evaluation checklists you could use. Conducting your market research. Once you gather your intelligence and look at your demographics, can you afford to drive in these different areas? And you know where are all these people? And, and by the way, get the demographics of that business. You know they may have satellite offices. Do you want to drive to Ohio or Michigan to pick up on the rest of these um, members of this business, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? And I think you've got the idea. And that really concludes our WebEx today, other than there is another guide called Target Marketing that you can also obtain from Kathy and her team at, uh, at Premier. And in closing, I want you to marinate on everything I showed you today. Order some of these or, or get the PDFs from Kathy and read them. And again, why we did this today was so many people have said, gosh, how do, you know, what do I say to people? How do, how do I approach people? And who do I approach people? And do you have a list? Do you have a lead system? Well, that all costs money. And lead systems are just people's names. You don't know anything from a lead system. If you take this target marketing approach, prospecting ideas, hone your own skills to be able to put your, market yourself, I think you're really going to upgrade your practice and with the help of the National Life Group with their advanced sales desk, with their regular sales desk, with their qualified plan sales desk, with the fine team at Premier Life and Annuity, I think you're really positioned for success. So Kathy, back to you. Thanks, Mike. That was a lot of information, a lot of good information. But I like your last part that you just said about leads. I have a lot of agents who call in and ask for leads. They want something basically easy selling points to them get them, you know, something they can actually call on. This this isn't that type of plan, but this is great because we don't have traditional leads at the, in the traditional area of life because we want people to understand it's a little more, more bit more in depth like this, you know, finding the right prospect is going to give you a lot more in commissions in the long run than a quick easy you know, term sales is going to get you for $300 a year or something. These are more in-depth sales processes, but this is the type of business that if you tune into, it's going to make you more money in the long run. Don't you agree? I agree, Kathy, and it really gets broken down to the psychological base of life. Um, ask questions. Ask questions. You know, mm -hmm. do you ever hear people saying, gee, you know, Mike, I, I wish you would have asked me that because I, I would have said yes. I, I, I would have wanted to sit down with you. Uh, I'm just so busy that, you know, I, I don't think about this stuff. But if somebody comes and jogs my memory and says, hey, um, would you like to sit down? Do you have, do, you know, for example, really quick, because I know we ran over our time. But, uh, you know, stories are, and I can tell you one of the biggest, most powerful prospecting methods is to become a storyteller. I've asked agents in my 30-year career, this is good, I'm glad I just remembered this, and I, I, I'm, I apologize for not bringing it up at the beginning. I've asked some of the most successful, successful, beyond, crazy successful people, how do you do it? What's your secret magic? And they look at me and they go, Mike, <laughs> it's a little bit of everything, but man, I just tell them stories. I tell them stories about clients that I've dealt with. For example, there was one here in Tampa I told some people before. He was a, a one-man shop real estate attorney. And he had a family from another marriage with two, kids, two children, and he had a, a new wife with a new child. And uh, you know, he took a, a real hit in 2008, as everybody else did, that was tied to the real estate industry. Long story made short, he uh, was approached by this agent 
who will remain nameless, and he, he, he just basically went into product pedal. He wanted to sell them some life insurance and some term. And, uh, and then he backed up and he tried to sell them an IUL, and the guy said, look, I, I've got kids in college. Uh, let's just take this term out and I'll convert it later to an IUL and I'll overfund it and I like the living benefit story and all this other stuff and it was great. Well, he bought a million dollar term and then um, he died. He died six months later in a boating accident. He fell off the boat trying to pull up an anchor and he drowned. He hit his head on the, uh, on the hull of a boat. It was a freak accident, but that's what happens out there in real life. And here's what happened at the end. Um, he went to his funeral. He met his wife. He met both of the, the ex-wife and the current wife. And he said to the current wife, you know, um, here's my card. Give me a call. We got some paperwork to do. So, you know, in a couple of weeks, give me a shout. So she called him and she says, well, I understand he had life insurance. I, I need to get, I need to get that life insurance in my possession. I got a lot of bills to pay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What do you need? I need all these documents. And I need the, you know, the death certificate and the sheriff's, you know, the sheriff's department report, you know, the coroner's report, blah, 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 blah. When he went to pick all this stuff up, folks, she was, she, her complete demeanor had changed. She was angry, and he goes, well, what's going on? And she goes, I'm, I'm really upset at you. He goes, why? He goes, well, I, actually, I was so upset, I went to see an attorney this week, and he'll be contacting you. And he's like, oh, my God, what happened? Um, did you know my husband had no will or trust in place? His finances are in a shambles. I had his ex-wife's attorney call me the other day wanting to know how much of that, does he have life insurance, and how much of it was earmarked for his first family and kids. Secondly, I've got business clients calling saying they have escrow accounts and they have all sorts of real estate, attend, uh, uh, real estate situations in play. Uh, my husband was a one-man band. I don't know what he was doing in his business. And then I thought I was going to sell his business, and it's not worth anything. So um, it's just a story, but it's a powerful story. And if I told that to a business owner, they'd get it. They'd say, oh, you know what? I don't, I don't have anything in writing. What if that happened to me? See, they, they get gently disturbed. So anyways, Kathy, it's, it's an interesting thing. Become a storyteller. Tell them the story of who you are, what you do, why you do it. Be passionate. Passion begets confidence, begets swagger, and you will be successful just because the more you know, um, you know, success is really a learning curve. So. Thanks for everybody staying a little over time on this, but our qualified plans uh, session will start. We'll get back into the sophisticated nitty-gritty with Mary Reed of ABC Pentegra, a very well-known uh, uh, third-party administrator that will help you close some of these more advanced sales that are the commissions in these things could be sixty to $90,000 or more a case. That's something to look at, but you're also doing the right things and providing benefits. So, Kathy, thanks again for inviting me, and I hope that this thank was a nice you. time out and gave somebody some valuable information. Got a lot of good information to he share here. Um, we did record this. I had a couple people asking this, asking me if this is recorded. We did. We had a lot of people come on and kind of go off at the same time, but this is recorded, so don't worry about that. We'll get this out to you if, um, when you need it. But one thing I do want to mention is a lot of people, you know, are going to want to get information and order anything before anything can be ordered for you. We do need to make sure that we have your contracting set up. That way you're ready to go, too. Uh, 